My name is John Schoolcraft. I'm the creative director at Oatly. The problem was from the beginning is that there was no real brand. It was an invisible brand, but everything inside the package and box was fantastic, you know. We had a pretty good base of clients that had found us anyway, but they had found us because it was that they couldn't drink dairy products, for example. And so the task then was super simple. It's just, you know, show this to everyone else and let them try it. Because once people try it, they tend to like it. We cut down the size of the marketing department because we didn't uh, feel that we needed a marketing department. You know, like in most food companies, you have these product managers and they make all the decisions about the product. But we're like, why do we need them? We have a, it's all, all the products, every product, new product, is a, it's a CEO level decision. So why should the CEO hide from that decision? He's gonna be involved in it. Why do we have people that are going to be pretending to do that? Why don't we just flatten things out a bit, make the decisions with everyone in the group and then work and go forward, so. If you take, a a company that has kind of a rigid food format and then you change the processes around pretty much completely it can create confusion the cool thing is is that um, because we were focused on doing things and not just talking you would start to see things happen and people would just catch on and then once that becomes kind of infectious now it's a completely different feeling in the company then than there was during that transition period. But transition periods are always very difficult. A lot of people have really high ambitions. I wouldn't say most people, but there are a lot of people. But they get stuck in a system where there's people maybe above them that don't have such high ambitions, they get quite scared. And no one wants to get fired, so you're sitting in this zone of, you know, just like, oh, I don't want to do the wrong thing. Where we're, we're quite flat in that sense, Tony and I have worked together for 15 years before, and so um, I'm working with the agency, and I'm buying at the same time, so I'm buying my own work. So if I screw it up, it's my fault. <laughs> and then it goes up to Tony for discussion, and we discuss it. So there's no, f there's no, f we've removed all that fear of if this campaign doesn't work, the CEO is going to kill me. That's gone, he'll kill me before. <laughs> You know, so it's, it's like we've discussed it and then we take a risk. And that means that we're, we become quite fearless. So we said, okay, the first thing we have is the packaging. So that's our main media. That's, we own that. So the whole thought was to put something that's interesting on the side of the package. Well, first of all, to create a nice, interesting package to do everything that's legal on the back, so give everyone, we call it the boring side, but just everywhere you read, there should be something interesting. And the idea was is that when, if you look at the, the dairy alternative or the dairy uh, shelves, it's just everything pours from the right or the left. It just, you, and they color code everything because there's a color coding pattern in the design world. So we just said, why don't we, if we look nothing like that at all, and we look like we just made these packages ourselves in the basement. And then people will pick them up. So they'll go into the shop and say, what's this? And if they turn the side of the package, the idea is that they would start to read. And if they start to read, they have to buy it. So the Bigfoot on the pack, we've run that in The Guardian as a full page ad. It's like, here's what we believe. And there's some very political statements that basically it's like, you know, most brands are afraid to say what they think because they'll scare people away. We think it's a way to get new friends. And it just says that we think it doesn't matter what race or gender or anything you are, you're of equal worth, you know? Well, who cares what color your fingernails are? And brands don't do that. There's another one that says, if you make food products that have no nutritional value whatsoever, it should be criminal. The implications of that are quite big, <laughs> but it's like, if you, if you, Again, we're value-based, so nutritional health, uh, sustainability, transparency. That's all we do. That's all we talk about. And when you're value-based, you, you can, those become very, you can be quite honest about those things. We created something at first called 
Tony TV because Tony is basically a living version of the packaging. So we just thought if we can get people to meet Tony and see how he thinks and what he's doing, then they'll want to try the packaging. And it's quite like the packaging. So we wrote a bunch of fake scripts and we told him we're going to shoot these series of commercials and he's very private. He doesn't want to be famous. He doesn't want to do it. But we wrote him these fake, fake scripts and he's like, these are terrible. He calls me up the night before. These are terrible. This isn't world class. Everything has to be world class. And then it gets through. That's our only approval. If something's world class, it gets through. These aren't world class. Let's just try it and see what happens. So the scripts were kind of fake. The idea was just to get him talking on camera about how much he hated the idea and he hated being part of it and why can't we just do something that sells the product. Do you want to play or do you want to be straight and see what you think? Yes, I can be. I can be straight and straight. I mean, we want to sell products, but we don't want to really sell them. We want people to f kind of find their own way, and we want these products to help people out. And so then you have two things, and, and you have um, nutritional health and, and sustainability. So I think those are two issues that become quite much... I mean, if people drink our products, they're doing something good for themselves and for the planet. And that becomes a bigger that becomes a bigger picture. So, um, I mean, I'm, I'm from, I'm from, I grew up in like the meat eating, you know, the U.S. It just, you just ate meat all the time. And then when you, when you work here, you see all the numbers and the statistics and all the scientific reports and you realize that animal-based eating is killing the planet and killing people. <laughs> so I think that's the bigger picture is if that we can contribute to a plant-based society or encouraging people to try it more often or a little or sometimes or whatever, it steps in the right direction. Everyone kind of wants to be this challenger brand, but I'm not sure if everyone really knows how much of a pain in the ass it is to be a challenger brand. So. It would be much easier if I just went to work and just did really good stuff and then went home. But being a challenger brand means you're constantly threat of getting sued, of the newspapers ringing you, of threatening everyone else's job because they're doing a really good job. And maybe you're saying something controversial and it's working against what they're doing. It's, it's very difficult. It's all encompassing. Um, so, I, I think you can feel the brands that really are a challenger brand because they run a lot of, of risks, both personal risks maybe and, 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 and corporate risks also because you can be really, really hot and interesting one day and then you can be just, you know. At the same time, if you're not, if you're not willing to, to stand up to the big boys and, and show a different way, <laughs> Um, I don't know, you just get lost, I guess, so you kind of have to be. It used to be this wild, crazy, it was built on hopes and dreams, and with a great advertising campaign, you can go from nothing to something great, and then it just kind of got, the clients pressured the, the industry down, the money wasn't there, that they didn't get the talent, I don't know, um, so many different things, and everything just kind of, got kind of, you know, mainstream and boring in the center. Anyway, in, in, in this part of the world. So it was just, there were less wild ideas and less creative things. And, and it just kind of got just, I don't know, really, really, really boring. And I think a lot of people looked at their lives and say, do I want to work in an advertising industry that everything's just kind of average? So, or work on a brand or something like that. And then there's, you know, everything evolves. And so for us, it's just lucky. We have the great, we have the perfect product that helps people's lives at the right time. So this product, it's the same product that we've had for maybe 15 years, but the timing wasn't necessarily right. People weren't thinking plant-based. People weren't thinking planet. People weren't looking at the problems, the scientific problems of milk or meat or anything like that. And here we come at the right time with the right message and you can start to change things. Kind of like this since we relaunched.